Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Beta FPV Lite 2 SE. SE typically means special edition, but what's special about this? Uh, they made a few changes. Uh, they're running custom firmware instead of OpenTX. OpenTX apparently was given some people fits. Could, you know, without a screen or an interface to know what's going on in OpenTX, you're just looking at lights and pressing buttons and trying to get where you need to get. Uh, they also have a internal battery rather than the battery that goes in this tray. Uh, you do have the void in there, so you can maybe stick some whoop batteries in there or other treasures. Uh, you can see we've got our setup and bind buttons here on the back. And that's really how you operate it is with buttons and LED flashes, just like you did in the previous iteration. Uh, there's no screen or anything. And a lot of people will immediately jump to comparisons with the Jumper T Lite. I'm not going to compare it to the Jumper T Lite, basically because this is $39 and this 4-in-1 version is $76 or almost $80. So if you're looking at this, I suspect it's because of your budget and therefore you can't afford to double your price and budget. So this really isn't in the market. But if you have this much money, I do recommend it. This has become uh, my daily driver. What else is new? They have higher power output. Uh, the previous version, this one, mine has a two on it. That's how I keep them straight. Um, only went out to 80 milliwatts and the new one is 100 milliwatts so presumably you get more range as I mentioned with the larger battery you should get more runtime uh, the previous battery was a 2s350 that's about what you can squeeze in that little bay don't can't verify that I didn't run it for eight hours to see I just tested it a little bit uh, the gimbals all the same they're the same gimbals uh, the paint job the feel the texture on everything is all the same as the previous there is a little bit of grippage for anybody who's not familiar that does help to hold it in the hand and I do wish the T-Lite had that little bit of grippage here on the edge see if I can get that in the shot see how it's a little bit rough over here I do like that I think it helps hold it in your palms uh, I tend to pinch uh, so anyone who says you can't pinch on a joystick controller is not being open-minded in my opinion um, I prefer this and I went through that in my T-Lite video and why that might be. Uh, the trainer port on the bottom, while we still have the port, it does not do anything. Uh, according to the documentation, I don't typically mess with that sort of stuff anyways. We do charge via USB-C over here. And when you plug it into your Windows-based computer, uh, a little dialog will pop up from the system trailer down by the clock. It says installing device drivers. Uh, it'll say joystick, I believe, HID, human interface device. And then you can use this for a simulator, which is quite handy. But the USB port is on the bottom, so you kind of want a short neck USB port or USB cable end. Uh, that way, depending upon how you're holding it, it might not get in your way. Uh, you could use a right angle adapter, but the right angle adapters for USB ports aren't real hardy, so I'd worry over time that might break down or actually create uh, a little bit of stress on the connector inside. Something to be aware of. So basically how you use the radio, how you bind it up is, I'm not going to go through it. The, the instructions are actually laid out fairly well. Uh, I would say you should be able to read these and follow it along. It is going to be a little bit more of a challenge because you do have to uh, watch the series of lights. How many times does the red light flash? That was my first challenge to figure out which protocol you're in. It does support more protocols than the other one, but not a lot like you find in a four and one. So that's something else you need to keep in mind. But you have to power it on and you read the number of red flashes to know which protocol you're in. And then if you want to switch protocol, you turn it off. Uh, I think you press the setup button, then you turn it back on. That changes it by one. You kind of have to step through each protocol. Uh, and then, of course, you've got a binding button here on the back. I think it binds, it runs the binding command for about 10 seconds. So you need to have your quad or your receiver in binding mode. You know, flashing brightly typically is what we see. And then you want to turn the binding on in this, and then it should bind up and work just fine. It did for me in my case, uh, showing you a little bit of stick cam here so you know that I did use it to verify <laughs> kind of all the things I'm talking about here in the review video. I don't want to make this extremely long. I think it's probably been covered by a lot of other people in the hobby. For a budget radio, I think it's really hard to get in for under $40, and in this particular case, it does it. Uh, it's not going to serve every purpose in your future, but if you want to just stick your toe into FPV and see if it's for you, it's a good start at $39. Uh, this has been out for a while, so some of you that have the SE edition, I would like you to take a moment, if you would, and leave your experiences down at the bottom. Remember, this is about the SE. I know people had problems with the original. 
That's probably why they discontinued it and don't sell it anymore. There was open TX problems. There was problems with uh, gimbals not being hooked up or at least one of the axes not being hooked up. I hope several people kind of identify that. Unfortunately, they would get it new. It wouldn't work. They would unscrew the back. They would find some cables sending me pictures uh, that weren't connected. We would work to reconnect those and then uh, they would be off and running. So uh, if you have the SE edition, as I put on the back of mine too, I'd sure like to know what you're finding, especially your out of box experience, any frustrations you might have or any quirks, or you know, if you're enjoying it and serving every purpose that you want, great. I'd love to hear that as well. If you have any other comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know <laughs> in the comment section below. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.